Hi, Jane. Hello, Stacey. Nice to see you again. I know. Nice to see you. I hope you're not melting in the heat. No, it's been raining this morning, so uh, the heat has all disappeared. <laughs> we, I'm quite near the coast, so I get lovely sea breezes, so I haven't been too hot. But I, I shouldn't feel too smug about it because I bet you've been roasting. <laughs> we have been. It's been very warm inland. <laughs> OK, um, I've got a couple of questions for you this week. Our first question is from Melody, who says, when would you start to introduce a fold to feeds ahead of weaning? What would you recommend and why? Right, well... My, my uh, approach with the foals is let them share their dam's feed as soon as they want to. So I put the feed bowl on the, on the ground for them. If mum's getting very thin and the foal's getting very fat, then we'll put the feed bowl where she can reach it, but Baba can't. But hmm. if they learn to eat their feed alongside their mum, then uh, that's, um, that's fine. That gets them going. And they're learning from mum about what foods to eat or not. So that's that's the best start. What to feed the foal after weaning depends a lot on when the foal's weaned. Um, it's traditional in this country to wean at five or six months, which is actually ahead of when nature would do it, and ahead of when the foal's digestive tract is adapted to um, eating solid food. So if we can delay weaning until seven and a half months, then uh, the gut microbes are all up and running to break down fibre for the foal and there won't be such a setback at weaning and uh, everybody's going to be happy. The, um, if, the foal, if the mare is in foal again, that foal isn't going to take a great deal of her resources until the last three months. So very often when foals are weaned earlier with the reason that the mare's in foal again, it often isn't that that's making the impact it's just that maybe the mare isn't being fed enough to support herself and the foal mm. um early weaned foals and why early i mean less than seven and a half months will need some additional nutrition and the um, red bag grass pellets are absolutely ideal for early wean foals or um, even foals weaned, weaned a bit later but in the winter and there's no grass around the red bag grass pellets are like spring grass and that's absolutely brilliant a little bit of extra support for the gut microbes early wean foals may be uh, eclipse recovery later ones maybe a bit of extra brewers yeast will help that's, that's great advice. I've condensed it <laughs> <laughs> no, no, thank you Melody it's a good point Thank you, Jane. And we've also had a customer say, I have recently moved my horse with EMS onto Simple System Feeds. He is enjoying the Meta Slim and Lucy Fiber Cubes, but although I wet the organic Lucy stalks, I am finding them rather dusty. Is this normal? I especially notice this when preparing feeds. Yeah, the um, organic Lucy stalks are a brilliant feed. They're 100% pure lucerne chop. We haven't put any coatings or additives. Uh, the reason a lot of chops have coatings or additives on them is in order to suppress fine material. Now, when we open a bale of hay and a cloud of dust comes out, yes, we should be worried because that dust is fungal spores and that's not good for man nor beast. But the small particles in a product like the organic Lucy stalks are crushed leaves. Now, Lucerne has very strong stems and very fine, delicate leaves. And their leaves dry out very quickly and go extremely brittle. So when we're preparing the Lucy stalks, we sieve it to remove quite a lot of the leaf, but we don't want to remove every last vestige of the leaf because that is actually quite good nutrition. Mm. So yes, there will always be fine particles in there because of the nutritional value and you see them because we haven't put molasses or cheap oil on to suppress them. Most of the people who are using the Lucy stalks want a low calorie feed. So to put something high calorie on to suppress the nutrition just seems uh, a little bit counterproductive for us. So um, if the uh, fine particles are an issue 
for you, what I would suggest is rather than splitting the bag open and tipping it into your bin, use it from the bag, because when you tip it, it all gushes out and a cloud of the fine material will come up. Um, so if you handle it quietly, there's, there's no problem with it. And all feeds should be fed at least dampened anyway. So um, once it's got water on it, that will suppress any fine materials and that won't impact on your horse at all. If you're allergic to um, fine loose sand material yourself, <laughs> um, probably your best bet is to um, wear a face mask. There's lots of those around at the moment. <laughs> yeah, there definitely are. So, um, yeah, so the fine materials are an inevitable consequence, really, of us trying to give you a really good product without any additives on it. Thank you, Jane. Um, and that's all of our questions from customers. All right. Yeah, it's good selection. How have things been with your horses this week? Oh, well, I mean, they've all been um, happy in the sea breeze and not too hot. But like most horse owners, I'm fanatical about ragwort and I've been out digging up ragwort wherever I can find it. Uh, I had somebody from the local uh, nature conservation people look at my land a few years ago and um, they were quite upset that I was raging war against the ragwort and explained <laughs> that it was a vital food for the cinnamon moth. Uh, cinnabar moth so um, I had a pact with him and I said well if I see cinnabar moth caterpillars on my ragwort and they're very distinctive they're black and yellow stripy creatures I said I will let them eat the ragwort instead of me pulling it up if I don't see any that ragwort's going <laughs> but I was having a very interesting chat with uh, a lovely customer of ours a few days ago who commented that she too was waging war against the ragwort but she found that most of it was concentrated in front of south and west facing hedges thought, well that's interesting and my worst patch is in front of the south and west facing tree belt okay. so I thought well I wonder why that is and I reckon it's because the seeds are windborne and when they come up against, um, and the prevailing wind is southwest, so when they come near a hedge, the, the wind will drop and the seeds will drop. So that's why you'll find possibly more ragwort in front of south and west facing hedges and tree belts than you will in the rest of the field. That's not to say there isn't ragwort in other places because the little stuff gets up all over the place. But um, I thought it was an interesting point and I thank our lovely customer for discussing it with me. Oh, no, that is interesting. <laughs> yeah. But, um, yeah, people all say, oh, well, horses don't eat ragwort, so it's not a problem. Yeah, if you can stop them treading on it when they're dashing about, fine. But if they tread on it and it gets bruised or damaged, it makes sugar and is then very palatable. So the best thing is to, um, if you see ragwort, get rid of ragwort. Um mm -hmm. And you can get rid of it all year. I, I was pulling out little tiny rosetti things of ragwort all through the winter. So um, yeah, we must keep our horses healthy. Absolutely. Well, yeah. thank you so much for your time today, Jane. You're welcome, Stacey. I should look forward to our next session. <laughs> Me too. Enjoy the rest of your day. And you, Stacey. Bye then. Bye.